let's get started right now with news you can use. We're going to hit you with a couple of pieces of good news today and, and one not quite so good, but at least we're going to tend to focus more on the good news today. Number one good news and something that I'm surprised hasn't made more of the national media uh, recently is the announcement uh, day before yesterday that by the Lawrence Livermore Lab here in California, in the Bay Area, uh, that they have successfully completed a full-scale project for nuclear fission, fusion. Uh, nuclear fusion, just for everybody's background, is a process that powers the sun. And basically what happens is we combine, we collide heavy hydrogen atoms and they convert to helium. In the process, it gives off energy and it gives off self-sustaining energy that is essentially unlimited. Um, this has really not been played up like it needs to be, in my opinion, because this is gonna be, this will change everything uh, on this planet for the next 100 to 500 years. Uh, it may take 20 years to be fully implemented, but what this means is pure, uh, permanently sustainable, whether the sun shines or not, energy that we can control, uh, we can create, and it has almost no cost to it because it is self-sustaining. In other words, <clears throat> as it generates more and more energy, it continues to fund itself. It's essentially a perpetual motion form of energy. They've been trying in theory to do this stuff for over a hundred years. A couple of years ago, they were able to do a small scale project um, and they've, they've tried different angles like combining and colliding molecules and atoms at very small levels, but they've been able to successfully do this. We've got an abundance of hydrogen. We're short on helium. And of course, we're short on energy. This would wipe out, uh, you know, all the inflationary pressures that come with powering cars, powering houses, powering anything. Uh, you'd be able to get essentially free at some point, maybe 200 years down the road, but it'll be free energy for everybody. So I think that's really good news. If you want to put your money in something long-term, uh, that's going to be, like I said, a multi, multi-trillion dollar deal. Uh, I would stick it into some type of fusion investment, something where they're going to develop uh, nuclear fusion type uh, devices. Uh, and I have, have no idea. I'm not smart enough to figure out exactly where that's going to come from or what that's going to mean, but it will certainly mean cheap, abundant, free, close to free, uh, energy. And, you know, it's, I think it's early enough in the game that this is going to end up being like the internet where it's going to end up being essentially free for most people. People will figure out how to monetize it, of course, but uh, this is very, very good news. So I'd keep my eyes on that. That's the uh, first piece of good news. Uh, second piece, and, and this is in the, um, the economics department, is uh, inflationary pressures. And because today we can look at very specific areas they've gone in and done some research as to where inflation is primarily coming from. Um, not just in terms of materials or supplies or services, but geographically. And what they found is that inflation is almost double in the large cities what it is in some of the smaller cities. Here's a, here's a list, a current list of the uh, highest inflation for the last two months areas of the country. I'll start from number 20, go up to number one, the most inflationary pressure. Uh, number 20 is San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward area of California. Number 19 is the San Diego, Carlsbad area. 18 is Washington, D.C., Arlington, uh, Metroplex. 17, Los Angeles, Long Beach, Anaheim. 16, Minneapolis, St. Paul area of Minnesota. 15 is the Denver, Aurora, Colorado area. 14, Chicago area, Naperville, uh, Elgin, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin areas. Uh, 13, Riverside, Inland Empire, uh, it, Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario, California. Number 12, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Texas. 11, St. Louis, Missouri. Number 10, Philadelphia, uh, Camden, Wilmington, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, the Delmarva, basically. Uh, that, for example, that has gone up 2.3% inflation just in the last two months. So it's going to double to triple the national rate uh, that we're seeing. Number nine, uh, Tampa, St. Pete, uh, Florida. Number eight, Detroit, Warren, Dearborn, Michigan. That's gone up 3% just in the last two months. Houston, Texas brings us to number seven. Uh, Miami, Florida, Day, uh, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. Number five, Baltimore, Columbia, Townsend, Maryland. Number four, Seattle, Tacoma. Bellevue, Washington. 
That's 3.2% just in the last 60 days. In third place, uh, the third highest inflationary pressures in the last two months in the last year, Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Roswell, Georgia. Second highest, uh, and this is not a surprise, Phoenix, Mesa, Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, in, in top place, and this was the only relatively small town on the entire list, Anchorage, Alaska. And that's just because of logistics. It's hard to get stuff to and from Alaska. I'm surprised Honolulu is not on there. Uh, it should have been. So anyway, these are the areas. And, and just for an example, uh, the Anchorage, Alaska area saw increase in inflationary pressures go up to 7.1% 7, 7 last um, two months. That comes out to 42% per year uh, annual inflation rate when you forecast it out. I doubt it's going to come up that high, but um, you know, you're know you seeing places that have problems getting enough supplies or logistical issues getting things into the area like Anchorage, Alaska, and that is what is causing that. So that's our second item. Now, back to some good news. Uh, there are some areas, we always talk about the areas of the country and the cities of the country where prices are going to go down. And I read you that list last week for Moody's. They talked about the 204 uh, markets going to go uh, up, up slightly and 204 that are going down. Uh, but there's actually some markets in the country, and these are very unique markets, where the prices are still skyrocketing. It's, it's few and far between but there are some. So let me give you the list. We're going to start with the 10th uh, highest rise uh, market right now, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Harrisburg is uh, going up at a 22% annual increase. Tulsa, Oklahoma, number nine. Uh, number eight, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 20, almost 24% increase last year. Uh, we actually did one a couple of months ago in the Milwaukee Metroplex, and it was a great property. And we had multiple bidders, uh, even when people weren't getting multiple bids. Number seven, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Number six, Honolulu, Hawaii. Big reason for Honolulu and a couple of others on this list is because of remote work. People are moving to that area. And in other words, they're going to live in their vacation spot and work from there. Honolulu is a big recipient of that, especially Californians who've gotten tired of California moving to Honolulu. Number five, Greensboro, North Carolina, 20, a little over 25% increase. Wichita, Kansas, fourth place. These are places, by the way, that if you want to buy and hold, uh, I would definitely look at buying and holding in these areas. Number three, Omaha, Nebraska, 31%, 31.3% increase on an annual rate right now. Number two, and this thing's been on the list for a while, Memphis, Tennessee, 32.7, almost a third increase in the prices of houses in that area. And number one, this was a big surprise, uh, and I, I had to double check this thing. Number one is Miami, Florida. It is the hottest housing market in the U.S. right now, 36.2% annual rate. It's going up uh, right now close to 4% a month. Now, we're seeing drops of 4% a month in places like Los Angeles, uh, and I did not expect something like this. Well, the big reason is a lot of people uh, during COVID moved to Florida. A lot of people wanted to be in a bigger city. So once again, you've got a lot of Californians uh, who are moving from you know, particularly the Bay Area of California, San Francisco area, down to Miami, Florida. Uh, great economy, great uh, climate, uh, cheap housing prices compared to the same thing. The same house in, for example, San Francisco would be two and a half to three million with 600,000 in Miami. Um, and so, you know, who wouldn't want to go there? So anyway, that is uh, the hot spots right now. If you want to buy something and hold something, or if you want to flip, uh, you can be relatively assured that you're going to get a higher price when you get done with the rehab than when you started. So they're, they're few and far between. Uh, probably 1% of the market is in this kind of uh, space. Uh, but I would definitely keep my eyes on that list. So anyway, that's it for news you can use today.